Hello everyone, my name is Toby and welcome to an RPG Maker MV tutorial. This is my first tutorial using the RPG Maker MV program. Today I thought I'd show you a quick and easy puzzle idea. Um, basically it's a weighted switch puzzle. I'll show you how it works first. So your character comes along, there's a switch in the room, they can step on it and it will trigger a bridge to appear, but as soon as they switch, uh, step off of the switch, the bridge uh, disappears, like so. So we want to weight it down with something. So up here there's a boulder, you can push the boulder off the edge and it will fall down. Then you can push it onto the switch will weigh it down and then you can go up and walk across and uh, if you push the boulder off then the switch will become unweighted and the bridge will disappear again so the way we did this is first of all um, you're gonna need to create a common event um, this is a useful common event um, that will track um, your player's X and Y position. So go into your database, go to common events, name it player coordinates, um, then control variables, call it player X and have that uh, equal to game data, character, the player, and then map X and then the same for player Y is equal to map Y of the player. Um, ignore this get location info region ID stuff that will come in another tutorial later so you've got your common event running then you want to have an event over here called common events this is what an event that I have on every single map um, basically it triggers all the common events that I want to be running constantly throughout the gameplay and as you can see the top one here is just common event uh, player coordinates so there you go so make sure that's on parallel for the trigger and that will just run in the background so that means the game is now tracking the x and y position of your character if you don't know what x and y position are each square um, on the grid of your map is an it has an x and a y so x is horizontal y is vertical it basically tells the game what square on the grid your character is uh, so once you've done that then you want to create the switch so create a new event call it switch give it the switch graphic that you want then you want to have a parallel process for the trigger make sure through is on have it below characters as well that's quite important so then you want um, the game to know the x and y variable of a, your switch um, you can do it a different way but um, it just makes it easier for like copying and pasting the switch event for other puzzles later but um, so yeah so the way we're doing it today is we, we've got a variable for the red switch x coordinate and the red switch y coordinate um, the other way you could do it is um, if the character x is equal to whatever x the position of the switch is which is down here which is 1717 so I could do the conditional branch as if player X is 17 if player Y is 17 then this happens anyway I'm rambling on um, so make sure you've got your control variables red switch X is equal to map X of this event the switch event and the same for switch Y well red switch Y is equal to map Y of this event so now the game knows where the red switch is and then you can compare um, variables to each other so you can create a conditional and branch conditional branch like I have here uh, and basically it's asking is the player's X position the same as the switch X position if it is then it will check the Y position so it will say is player y variable equal to red switch y variable 
And if they are, then we can have uh, a sound effect. I've just done switch two. Um, and then you control a switch. I've made this one called puzzle bridge. This is what triggers the bridge to appear. Um, also have a uh, cell switch A is on. So you stood on the switch. The X and Y of your character is equal to the X and Y of the red switch event. It makes the sound effect play. It turns puzzle bridge switch on and then self switch A is on. Now this page uh, has the self switch A as the condition. So once your character has stood on it, it has triggered self switch A. Now then you're going to have a parallel process for the trigger. Again it's below characters. So now your character is standing on it, then the game is going to check if your player moves off of the switch. And the way we do that is we have a conditional branch. So then you, this time, if player X, instead of having equal to, like we did on the previous page, we do is not equal to, that's like an equal sign with a slash for it. So if the player's X coordinate is not equal to the red switch X coordinate, then it will play a switch sound effect. It will turn the puzzle bridge switch off, thus making the bridge disappear. And self switch A is off. And the same for wired. That means we can walk off of the switch in either direction, up, down, left or right. And that will trigger both of these things to happen. So then that will just take it back to this page. The switch pops back up. The bridge disappears. Um, so that's how you have the switch turned on and off when your character walks on it and then walks off of it. So let's take a quick look at the bridge just to make sure you're clear on what's going on with the bridge. Basically I've called it a bridge. Um, nice bridge graphic here. Have it below characters so you can walk on it. Uh, then you want to have the switch to turn this event on be puzzle bridge. So that means this event will not appear unless puzzle bridge switch is on. Um, these bottom ones here are just sort of the shadow graphic. Make sure if you're going to have that, have that as same as characters so you're, you're not walking on top of it. So as you remember, when you stood on this event, it turned puzzle bridge on, which turns on this, which makes the graphic appear. So how do we get the switch to stay on? Well, that's where the boulder comes in. So what we do here, we create an event and we call it boulder. Give it a nice boulder graphic. Um, make sure it's the same as characters so you can interact with it um, and have the interaction being the action button. So as you can see here, um, I've got two conditional branches going on. Basically, this is because, as you can see, you can push it from the this side or you can push it from above. Um, and I want it to react di in different ways depending on where the player is standing. So what I've done is if player is facing down, so that means if your character is here and you're interacting from above, that means you're going to be facing down. So you're facing down, you press the action button then it sets a movement route. Make sure you have it as this event. It plays a sound effect to make it sound as if you're pushing the boulder. We're going to have through on. That means it can go through other events or through places it sh wouldn't normally be able to go, such as walls, um, etc. So through is now on. So you move the boulder down one. Then we have direction fix on. And I've changed the speed and the frequency to maximum. And that means that when we do move down twice, as if it's falling down two tiles, it will move quicker than when you push it. Um, and that basically just makes, it's a graphical thing. It makes it look like it's moving fast. Um, this sound effect here is the boulder hitting the ground. Um, and then you turn through off, direction fix off, and return the speed and frequency to normal. Um, the reason we have direction fix on is so that when it's moving down, it doesn't roll in the air, it just sort of stays where it is. I think it looks better that way. And we have wait for completion as well. 
Then we have self switch A is on, which basically turns the boulder into a different type of event. Um, but I'll just quickly run over this one as well. This is very similar. Um, if, if the character's here, facing right, and he pushes the boulder, it's going to push the boulder right one. All the same stuff applies, making it go faster, direction fixes on, moves down twice, sound effect of it hitting the floor, through is off, direction fixes off, speed and frequency is returned to normal. Um, then self switch A is on. So it does the same thing, just in a different direction. Um, you can do, you know, you can change it if, if the, the boulder was. Um, Sorry about that. If the boulder was in another position, you can just do if the character is facing left, then this happens. Um, so, yeah, so self switch A is now on. That means the boulder is on the floor, and we want you to be able to just push it like a normal boulder. Now, self switch A is on for the condition. Make sure that's the uh, correct thing. Same as characters again, action button. This time it's very simple. You just have a set movement route. Um, this event again make sure it's not the player or anything because um, I think it defaults on player so this event play the sound effect for earth uh, move away from the player make sure you have skip if cannot move that means if you push it against the wall um, it won't freeze the game it will just skip it it will still play the sound effect but I don't think that matters too much uh, so yeah so now we can push the boulder off it lands on the floor and you can push it around but um, remember before when we triggered the red switch as the player the switch was looking to see if the players X and Y would match the switch X and Y so now we need to create a separate event up here called boulder coordinates um, basically this is creating a map or a, a X and Y variable for the boulder and, and uh, same thing as the switch and the character boulder X is uh, the variable name make sure that is equal to map X of the boulder and then do the same for Y make sure it's parallel process so it's happening constantly in the background so then you push the boulder onto the floor then you push it onto the switch back to the switch event um, now it's doing exactly the same thing that we did when the player was standing on it but this time it's checking if the boulder is on top of the switch so is boulders x equal to the switch x yes okay that means then um, if boulder y is equal to the red switch y yes it is Fantastic, it plays the sound effect, it turns the, s the bridge switch on, which makes the bridge appear. This time we're doing control swell self switch B. Um, so th this will skip a page and go onto this page. Um, make sure you have B on for this. And it's the same thing as the player, but because you're not directly controlling the boulder, that means the boulder can just stay where it is and then you can walk off and go up the ladder and walk across the bridge um, so this page essentially is identical to this page except we've replaced player X with boulder X and the same for boulder Y um, these are conditional branches remember um, and yeah and that's all there is to it um, it does sound complicated now that I've talk you through it but basically it's all about the game checking the x and y coordinates of the important events if they match up then this happens if they don't then something else happens so let's run through it one more time so the game is checking the x and y coordinates of the player um, when I step on it, that means the X and Y coordinates of the player are equal to the X and Y of the switch. When I step off of it, they are no longer equal, so the switch turns self switch A off, turns the puzzle bridge switch off, that makes that disappear. So then you go up here, you push the boulder off the edge, 
and you can go down, push the boulder. It's checking, the game is constantly checking the X and Y of the boulder because of the other um, parallel process event. When that lands on top, when the X and Y of the boulder are the same as the X and Y as the red switch, then the bridge will appear and we can walk across it and we can get to the exit. So I hope I hope this tutorial has been useful. I uh, hope it's not been too complicated. If you've got questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching and I will see you on the next tutorial. Bye.